You guys are so rich. Holy cow. Look at you. Sir, you haven't laughed this whole time. You just smile. I feel like every time you feel like oh, I should laugh now, you just think about your bank account. Like, <laughs> I have a lair. <laughs> I feel like you know exactly what an NFT is. But you also have no idea what EBT is. So I feel like, what is that, a cryptocurrency? I never heard of that before. Gotta start investing in that, Franklin. <laughs> From Los Angeles, I'm from West LA. Uh, I have a lot of family uh, from East LA though. And if you guys don't know, East LA uh, is known for like gang violence and drugs and guns. And um, now it's known for like white ladies that sell crystals. <laughs> so it's changed a lot. And uh, my uncle Saul, uh, who lives out there, uh, hardcore cholo from like the 90s. Like he's been in gangs, like he's been shot, he's been stabbed. Like I'm pretty sure he's never had birthday cake. Like he's had a rough life. <laughs> It's hard, dude. And he loves East LA, but here's the thing. He just got out of jail, and he's been in jail for so long that he doesn't know what gentrification is. But he still loves East LA and everything that comes to it. He's like, hey, dog, you gotta come out to East Los, dog. We got this new restaurant. It's cute as fuck. It's $20 a plate, but it's not about the food. It's about the ambiance. <laughs> And they got these drinks, right? It's half champagne, half orange juice. They call it a mimosa. <laughs> and it's bottomless, dog. You know what that means? It's forever, dude. Like, it just keeps coming. And like my dead homies, they just keep coming. <laughs> I was like, dude, are you just talking about brunch? He's like, I'll die for brunch, dog. I don't give a fuck, fool. Get Sunday fun day blasted on my neck. <laughs> And it's funny, so he's hanging out in this like hipster area now, so every time I see him, he's like becoming more and more progressive. So like, one time I came over to his house, he's like, hey dog, what's your pronouns? I was like, Saul? <laughs> I didn't know you knew about that stuff. He's like, you gotta learn, bro, you gotta learn. Because gender is a construct. Heterosexuality is a spectrum, fool, you know what I mean? It's like everywhere, dog. And it makes sense, too. That's why I bang those dudes in jail. You know what I mean? Like, it makes sense to me now. It makes sense. The chicks are cool and all, but sometimes you just want the warmth of a man. You know what I mean? Like, you just chill and watch it like a Timothy Chalamet movie. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you're in Hollywood. Next time you see Timothy Chalamet, tell him Uncle Saul said, what's up, fool? Call me by your name. I'll do more than that, dog. <laughs> Break you in half. <laughs> Don't throw away that peach, dude. <laughs> it's for the four people that saw that movie. <laughs> and you guys have kids? Yeah? No? I was, when I was eight years old, I walked in on my parents having sex. Just for that reason. It's, it's rough. That's a rough age, too. Because you wake up and you're like, pff, uh, pff, nightmares, you know? Like, I wonder what my parents are doing. You go into the hallway, you're like, why is my mom squeaming? <laughs> I open the door and I just see flesh, just two bodies moving around, no idea what I'm looking at. And they had a waterbed too, so it was like a lot of movement. <laughs> it's too much. And I'm like, mom, what are you doing? I asked my mom because whatever my dad was doing, he was very focused. He was locked in, <laughs> sweating profusely. My mom was just bored as fuck. She was just looking at her nails, <laughs> reading a magazine. Like, my mom hopped off and she's like, oh my God, honey, I didn't see you there. Uh, me and your father uh, were wrestling. I was like, wrestling? First of all, I'm eight years old. I fucking love wrestling. You're telling me this shit is real? Like what? But the worst part about all of it is like, uh, my dad up at that point was like my biggest hero. And he was clearly losing this wrestling match. <laughs> Like, my mom was on top of him just getting it, just logged in. I was like, Dad, tag me in. Do you need me to get a steel chair? I will hit this bitch. I'm gonna secure the belt. 
And that ruined wrestling for like the rest of my life because like three months later, my buddy had a birthday party and at his birthday party, he had a bouncy house. So we're all jumping around in the bouncy house having a good old time and he's like, hey, you guys want to wrestle? I was like, wrestle? You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Give me that little butt, Kyle. I'll show you what a real power bomb is. <laughs> Fuck my friend to death that day. He is dead. <laughs> Put his little light up Velcro shoes on his five foot coffin. And you guys have that friend that needs to see a therapist, but instead of seeing a therapist, they just call you up to party with them. So they can just unload on you. That is tough, man. I got a buddy like that. Uh, I've known him forever. His name's Blammer. I don't know his real name. We just call him Blammer. Uh, he's a sound effect friend. Um, and he threw all these parties in high school. And he, was, he had a rough childhood. So he was, it was always covering up his pain. He always threw these big parties, parties, parties. And he threw so many parties, he even had a signature party move, okay? where he would run into a party, grab a bottle of anything alcoholic, start chugging it, spin around, slam it to the ground, called it a 360 blam slam. Coolest shit I've ever seen in my life at 16. <laughs> now, as the years started going by, and the party started going away, Blammer's demons did it, okay? So whenever he would call, I knew that he needed help. He needed a friend. So he would call me up and try to pretend like it's something else. Say, hey dude, what are you doing tonight, man? Just got a fucking 30 rack of Natty Ice. Let's fucking party, dude. It's gonna be a rager. I was like, hell yeah, dude. I'll see you there. He's like, I really need someone right now. I was like, what was that last party? He's like, nothing, dude. Toodaloo. <laughs> Fast forward to the party. I get there. There is no one there. It's just me and Blammer getting drunk. And I'm like, hey, man, I thought you said this was gonna be a party. Where is everybody? He's like, I don't know, dude. <sighs> Let me pull out my phone, see where they're at. Um, hey, while I have my phone out, you think I should text my biological father and see where he's been my whole life? Or am I gaslighting myself? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, dude. I think you need to see a therapist. He's like, I don't need to see a therapist, dude. All I need is my homies, some good weed, some good booze, and my high school PE teacher to come out and publicly apologize for what he did to me. <laughs> and then he picked up a bottle of Jack Daniels honey, and I was like, you don't have to do this, dude. He's like, I never had a choice. <laughs> He rips it open, he starts chugging it, he does the 360 blam slam, he spikes it to the ground, glass goes everywhere, I cover my face, I go to check back on my buddy Blammer, he is gone. There is no Blammer. There's just a mirror that I'm staring back into. Oh no, dude. I've been Blammer the whole time, dude. I am pain. That's what happens when you get really sad and you write a joke after an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, it hurts. <laughs> Any uh, straight guys that prefer to go to gay bars? Yeah? Okay, don't point them out. You fucking bring them up. You fucking guns. It's great, it's great. Okay, when things open up, you guys gotta open up, is what I'm saying, all right? It's the best, they're just way more fun. First of all, free drinks, amazing, all right? You wanna know how great those are? Ask any woman in here, amazing. But the best part, honestly, the best part is the compliments. Oh my goodness, have you ever got, have you ever got one of those? They, oh my God, they make your soul feel good. You know what I mean? Like, I'll go to a straight bar tonight, uh, no girl gives a shit when I walk in. I go to a gay bar, I'm the belle of the ball, okay? A few years ago, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, at a gay bar and this dude gave me the greatest pickup line I have ever heard in my entire life. Uh, and he walked up to me and he was like, excuse me, sir, can I ask you a question? I was like, yes. <laughs> and he was like, I love you. And I was like, that's not a question. And then he said, and it never will be. And I was like, oh, I do declare. This volume, tell them gentlemen, has me thinking about joining the other team. So now I have a boyfriend in Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> his name's Christopher, he's a, he's a gold star gay. He told me he's a gold star gay. And I grew up in LA, I've never heard this term before. And uh, basically what that means is uh, he was born, he's been gay his whole life, you get a gold star in the gay community. He also explained to me what a platinum star gay was, which blew my mind. He said, when you were born, your mother had a cesarean section, so you didn't even touch one on the way out, okay? <laughs> slip right out, so now you're a little bit more progressive, Santa Barbara, with the terminology. So I told him, I was like, dang, so you're a gold star your whole life? Like, for me, like, I've been straight, but like, I watch a Brad Pitt movie, but like, he could get it, you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to touch that chin. 
He said, Gold Star his whole life. He had a little Southern accent too. He's like, oh my God, love it. I was like, so you would never even, even think about being with a woman? He's like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Vaginas creep me out. How do you know when they're done? They just stay wet all the time. What am I supposed to do? Put a towel over like a dead dog? I'd get out my blow dryer like, get away from me, you sucker fish. Go back into the ocean from whence you came. That's why I like penises. You know when they're done, because they look like they died. They take their last breath. Like, tell my wife and kids I love them. Then turn into a little gummy worm. And then 15 minutes later, there's been a resurrection. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Santa Barbara. You guys have been so much fun.